So we're looking here at the graph of um, f prime of x, so that's the derivative of some function. And what we want to do is um, try to figure out the things that it can tell us about the original function. So we want to know what can this graph that we're looking at tell us about f of x. Um, and the first thing uh, that I notice is that uh, there are places um, where the derivative is negative. Um, there's a couple of those. And then there are places where the derivative is positive. And if you remember the relationship between a derivative and the original function, um, then you might remember that um, the original function will be decreasing on any interval where the derivative is negative. So I'm going to highlight the places now where the uh, derivative is negative and thus the original function is decreasing. So uh, we got here, this interval right here, this interval here, and here. So you can actually see that um, the function, for instance, would be decreasing um, entirely on the interval from uh, negative 1 to 2, um, from negative 10 to negative 8, and so on. Um, and then kind of similarly, uh, we can look at where the function would be increasing. So the original function is increasing when the derivative is positive. So you can see that the derivative is positive on these intervals. And knowing that is an important thing. So then what's happening um, on the original function at these points where the derivative is uh, kind of transitioning? So we have a couple of points where we're transitioning. So if the derivative is changing from negative to positive, so that's happening here, um, that's happening here, and that's happening here, when the derivative transitions from negative to positive, um, negative to positive, what we end up with is we actually are going to have a minimum on the original function. Um, so each of these, x equals negative 8, x equals 2, and x equals 7, represent uh, minimums, relative minimums for the original function. And uh, similarly, when we have uh, places where the derivative transitions from a positive to a negative, uh, we get maximums on the original function. Um, so one of the first things that the derivative can tell us is it can really tell us about um, where the original function is increasing and decreasing and because it can tell us that it can also uh, help us figure out where the original function has relative minimums and relative maximums. So uh, what I'm going to do is switch back to the uh, original graph that we were looking at that wasn't all colored up and uh, talk a little bit more about what the derivative can tell us about the original function. So uh, I will do that in one second. Okay, so uh, we just looked at where the derivative was positive and where it was negative. Now what we're going to do is look at another um, characteristic of this graph for the derivative. And that's going to be where the derivative is increasing and where it's decreasing. So if I uh, look kind of here, you see that on that entire interval the derivative is increasing. And um, that means that the second derivative of the function would be positive. Um, and what it also means is that the original function for which this is the derivative must be concave up. So we can look and we can see that the original function is concave up on this interval. It's going to be concave up on this interval and concave up on this interval. Um, and then anywhere that the derivative is decreasing, so if we look and we see places where the derivative might be decreasing, um, then what we can tell is that it's going, uh, it being the original function, will be concave down. So the derivative is decreasing, for instance, uh, on this interval. So on that particular interval, we see that the derivative is um, decreasing, the second derivative will therefore be negative, um, and the original function will be concave down. Um, so we can tell concavity and we can tell um, increasing, decreasing, for a, the original function just by looking at the graph of the derivative, which is really useful. And it, it's why, um, more often than not, you'll be actually given the graph of the derivative and asked to interpret things, because uh, you can go up a level to the original function, you can go down a level to the second derivative, um, so you get a lot of information from it. So it's just one more thing that we want to do, and uh, I'm going to use a clean graph uh, to talk about it again. Although I, I did forget to mention, um, the relative maximums and minimums on this graph, um, and I've completely lost track of what colors I'm using here, but um, we have a, a relative minimum 
relative, uh, maximum rather, minimum, maximum, minimum, and a maximum. The, um, these represent the, uh, the x-coordinates of these points represent the uh, x-coordinates of the points of inflection of the original graph. Um, so one more slide where we will uh, try to tie a bunch of stuff together. So uh, bear with me and we'll do one more.